when we first got this project up and running, um, we decided to study sea lamprey. They were really the only sea run fish that used Sajunkanunk stream reliably that we saw. You know, their nests are very easy to see, the lamprey themselves are very easy to see, so we figured, well, if the dams are going to be removed on Sajunkanunk stream, the ideal species to study would be sea lamprey because they're already here, they're highly visible, they're charismatic, um, we can get our hands on them. So once we sort of got bitten by the sea lamprey bug, we decided this might be a really good opportunity for a long-term data set. Data sets like that are really lacking, especially when it comes to dam removal. We already had some pre-dam removal data on lamprey, and we decided, well, you know, from what we've seen so far with sea lamprey, we think that they might actually be pretty important in the stream, so it gave us the idea, well, let's, let's actually do a study and quantify what they do for in-stream habitat. This will be the fourth year. Um, and we've got some really interesting results from the last two years especially after the dams have come out and the lamprey have come back. So basically in the last 200 years this part of the stream hasn't seen lamprey. One of the goals of this project is to see how lamprey change sort of the structure and the function of the stream, the habitat and the fish and insects and nutrients. From what we've analyzed so far it looks like the in-stream habitat has improved for fish and invertebrates, and the things that are suggestive right now um, look like it creates really good habitats for Atlantic salmon and other fish to feed in. So we think that sea lamprey have a, would have a beneficial effect on Atlantic salmon and other species through two mechanisms. The first mechanism is the fact that they're spawning and dying and their carcasses are decomposing, which adds nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon into what would otherwise be nutrient-poor streams. The other effect would be we think that they actually condition habitat, so they remove fine substrate, they sort the sediment out, they create these really complex pit and mound structures. Well, basically what the fish do is, and I'll use the old nest here as an example, so here's the old mound, here's a new mound. They basically position themselves upstream, they grab rocks with their mouths, and if they have to loosen them from the substrate, they'll, they'll uh, so they flex their bodies and pull them out, and they'll pull them back, just pile them up in this mound here and they'll end up spawning in the pit here and the eggs will wash down into the mound and it seems that a lot of cases at least from our limited data of three years is that a lot of the nests are built in almost exactly the same spot whether that's a function of that habitat just seems to be particularly good and that's what they cue in on or they actually seek out actively former nest sites I don't know so maybe just coincidentally the habitat here happens to be good spawning habitat so they build nests here or have they modified the substrate so that it's actually more attractive to future lamprey spawners so when the new lamprey come in this area that's been modified already is actually better spawning habitat i don't know lampreys in general are very ancient fish they evolve somewhere around 500 million years ago, 550 million years ago. So they're sort of one of the earliest vertebrates that we see in the fossil record. He's got seven gill slits. It's a very primitive characteristic. He doesn't have true jaws. Basically the first two gill arches, that the, basically in this case cartilage that support the first two gill slits here, those structures are actually what evolved into our jaws. They've got a little pineal eye which is a light sensing organ up there. No paired fins, all they have is uh, medial dorsal fins. Dorsal fins on other what we think of as fish actually have little support structures. These don't, these are just kind of fleshy um, and they don't have pectoral or pelvic or anal fins like other fish have. They're, they're primitive in the sense that they haven't changed a whole lot in 400 million years or so, but they're pretty well adapted to their environment even though their body structure is very ancient, do pretty well today. Unlike sort of every other fish that, that we know and love, they don't have true jaws. So they actually latch on um, to larger fish that are swimming out in the open ocean. Um, as far as we know, sea lamprey, at least our population of sea lamprey, um, don't feed when they come up as adults. So they latch onto the sides of a larger bodied fish or a seal or something like that. They burrow a hole into the side of the fish with a, with a horny, keratinized, rasping tongue, and they basically suck the body fluids and the blood out of the fish. They can attached to the fish for a period of time and they'll drop off. So it's sort of a unique mode of feeding. When they come up in, uh, into the stream, um, they actually build these really elaborate nests. Um, they come up in these, these shallow, riffly, rocky areas and usually the males will initiate nest building and they'll latch onto rocks with their, their sucker disc mouth and they'll, if the rocks are small, they'll sort of just pull them back down. If the rocks are large and embedded, they'll sort of beat their tails against the substrate and, and wriggle these rocks loose and sometimes they'll sort of arch their backs and somersault and pull these rocks 
um, down with them and they'll build, they'll dig out a pit which is dominated sort of by fine sandy sediment and then these mounds in the back of them which are these really nice clean rocks that they piled up. So the idea is, is that by restoring connectivity between freshwater and marine systems that we can restore sort of the functional links where nutrients and energy are sort of cycled back and forth. There are landlocked invasive populations of sea lampreys such as in the upper Great Lakes where they're in such high densities um, that they do create a lot of damage to fisheries. There's no evidence that that happens here in Maine. Do I think people understand um, that dams that block spawning migrations of sea run fish, they do damage. And if you take them out, like we've seen as a junkadunk, the sea run fish come back. And we've seen not only sea lamprey come back, but we've seen alewife and Atlantic salmon come back in Sajunkadunk stream as well. So I think a lot of people, um, especially people like hunters and fishermen who are sort of in tune with nature anyway, you know, they realize that single species don't exist in a vacuum.